Hi everyone, I'm Jeremy. I am uh, going to be walking you through a uh, talk today about um, hacking the product management interview. And I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, information about how I uh, navigated the PM interview when I first started out as well. All right, so before we get dive in, uh, my current uh, role as a product manager, I've been in a PM role for about three years. Uh, prior to that, I was um, uh, a founder in uh, two startups. Uh, both were acquired. There were uh, smaller startups, um, and I have an MBA from Wake Forest and an MBA in a uh, um, business uh, degree from UNC Wilmington and a CS uh, minor. Okay, so <clears throat> before I uh, got hired into a a tech company as a PM, um, I uh, had a really bad experience with my first few interviews. In fact, like my first three interviews were just embarrassing. I remember thinking after my third interview uh, that I was just I should probably do something else because the interviews were going so poorly um, that I just you know really realized I had a, a really long way to go. And I would I would look at other people who um, uh, who were interviewing and I could listen to how they answered questions and I was amazed that they could switch these topics so quickly um, and I really just didn't know how they did it. Uh, so I kind of came up with kind of a game plan. I didn't want to give up on uh, becoming a PM. So I started really diving into um, PM books. I bought uh, uh, several books from Amazon. Uh, Lean Product Playbook was one of the, my favorite ones. Started reading all the product blogs, trying to learn kind of the lingo and how you talk about these uh, you know, product management uh, questions and interviews. Um, <clears throat> read through Lewis Lin's PM books. I think he had several out with lots of example questions. Went through those. Went through all the cracking the PM interview books as well. Um, and then I started kind of, when, when game time started, I started doing in-person mock interviews. And I've done lots of them i've done at least 30 and uh even to the point of when i say self interviews i used to literally get the questions and sit in a room by myself ask myself the questions and try to diagram them on the board uh like i would in a real real mock in or in a real interview um and uh as i you know started kind of getting all of this information started really diving in i had a few realizations i'm going to walk you through what they were the first one is is that tech companies hire for PM generalists. Um, this is a really key insight because it doesn't matter if you know today's technology, you're building tomorrow's technology. So what they're looking for is they, wanna, they want to know that they don't care if you're going to impress them with your knowledge of how Bitcoin works or how blockchain works. They want to know that they can drop you into a totally unfamiliar situation um, in a product space you don't know and that you can use your, you know, your PM, core PM skills to build your way out of it, to use logic to get yourself to the right feature, targeting the right users with the right prioritization because that is what will happen every day. Even if you know the blockchain space, for example, there's gonna be something to pop up that is gonna require you to have very logical, methodical thinking to get through the, uh, to get through the problem. Second realization I had after I was doing all those interviews and reading all those books with interview questions, I kind of came to the conclusion that actually uh, most of all of the questions were the same, but with slight variations. There were only about six real types of questions in product interviews that I found. Um, and if you could kind of bucket them into one of these categories, you kind of see the same patterns uh, of what makes a good answer for one, same for uh, the other ones, for example, if they ask you, hey, what is the uh, what is Apple's uh, strategy for the iPhone? It's probably the same type of like structured answer that they're looking for. What is um, Nike's uh, new market plan for um, a new type of uh, you know shoe that they're going to bring out? So these questions have a lot of similarities. And once you can kind of understand what, what's the kind of question you're being asked, then you can start kind of scaffolding and, and getting into a, 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 an answer. And which brings me kind of the third realization, which is, is that <clears throat> frameworks are what saved me. Um, 
that once I could identify what the type of question was, then uh, applying or figuring out like, hey, I have two or three frameworks that work for this type of question. Um, I'm going to use one of those frameworks that fit this type of question and, you know, start filling out the framework uh, to the interviewer. Keeps your, your uh, answers very structured, very logical, um, and it kind of lets the interviewer know like, hey, I'm not just winging this. I have like identified that this is this type of problem. I've identified that this is the, the framework and structure that I can use. And now I'm going to show you my skill set to get into the right answer. Okay, so I wanted to take this time to kind of go through um, a few different types of questions that you might encounter and how to answer them, or at least, at least how to think about how to answer them. So the first one is um, a strategy question. So if you get this question, um, what they're looking for is that you are very, that you can take this very messy problem, such as, um, hey, Nike, has appointed you to the new CEO, and they want you to expand market share. That you could take this anywhere, but they're looking for you to say, okay, here's the structure. You know, this is how I'm going to work through this problem in a very methodical and logical way. Um, a great framework for this, if you if you're just starting out in your uh, you know interview prep, is to use the five C framework. Now, I've modified this. It's the five C's and one T framework. You heard it here first. Um, and what this is referring to is five C's is very popular MBA framework, uh, competition, customers, collaborators, context, and company. And the one T is if you're interviewing at a tech company, I always tell people that you have to address technology. You can't, you can't talk about, um, you know, if you're, if you're interviewing for Apple, for example, and you're talking about who their competitors are and what the context and what customers want, and you just leave technology off. That's uh, not probably the, the right uh, answer that, that you need to, to lead with. Okay, next question. Um, next type of question is product design. This is a very common, um, probably for most entry-level PM roles, they're going to ask you a product design question, almost guaranteed. And if you look at this, a lot of this framework is um, what uh, Cracking the Coding interview, uh, PM Interview, uh, Lewis Lin's books, they all kind of have a very similar pattern. I have some slight variations in mine. Um, but uh, the first thing when you get this, this question, this, hey, uh, design a new Nike shoe. Um, the first thing you need to do is clarify. Okay, well, what do you mean by um, Nike shoe? Is, do you have any sort of goals uh, that we have in mind? Which brings us to the next question, which are, why are we doing this? Do we have a goal? You have to address this up front because the interviewer may be testing you to figure out if you're, um, if you're asking those questions up front, such as, hey, design a new shoe, and he may be thinking in his head, I want this candidate to uh, kind of start drilling in on that our actual need is to launch a shoe in a specific niche, um, in a specific region in the world. So after you get through those first two steps, um, who are our users? Got us go through those personas, start talking about uh, who, the, who the people are that are going to use this, this product, and uh, prioritize that group. Like whenever you finish making a list of, of anything, basically, in product management, you need to start with a prioritization right after that. You need to say, okay, these are our users. Let me prioritize them to figure out who is the persona that we're going to um, target. Uh, next next uh, tip is what are the uh, what are their needs? So you got to answer use cases. What do these people want? Uh, so I have the group. This is what they want. I want to prioritize it. Don't move forward in any of these steps without getting those prioritizations down. Um, one thing that I found very helpful is as soon as I would um, answer the question of okay, we're we're making a shoe for. Um, you know, a casual uh, athlete who plays basketball uh, in his backyard um, and his needs are that he wants to be able to jump higher. So as soon as you have identified that, like you need to state a vision. State the, my vision is to uh, create a shoe that uses um, or that fulfills the uh, customer's needs uh, of being able to jump higher. And this shoe is going to help them to jump 10% higher than 
um, what they had before. And that, that is kind of addressing the concept of that product market fit. Like you've kind of already established like, Hey, if I can, I could sell a product that, um, that, uh, helps someone jump 10% higher to somebody who wants to play basketball. Um, and their needs are that they want to be able to jump higher. Um, the next thing you do, uh, step number six here is solutions. So you got to start going through the solutions. Uh, and as soon as you go through the solutions, again, you have to go back to what PMs do most, which is prioritize. So write those solutions out, tell your interviewer what they are, and then prioritize those. And oftentimes when I say prioritize, you, you can't really prioritize without uh, writing down some characteristics of each. So a great example would be, well, solution A is that we use a carbon fiber shoe that's lighter. Um, solution B is that we put springs in the bottom of the shoe. You know, uh, springs are probably less practical. Uh, you know, you could, you could come up with a few different characteristics to tell your interviewer to say, well, I considered cost, carbon fiber probably is really expensive. Springs are probably hard to engineer, uh, but we have a lot of competencies in um, carbon fiber. You could make it up if you have to, but um, uh, you can, um, uh, once you have established uh, what those solutions are, uh, prioritize them, talk about the characteristics, why one is better than the other, and uh, tell that to your interview. Okay, now the last step, and this is something that I don't see on any sort of, um, uh, any of the popular frameworks that are out there, and that is number seven, which is critique your idea. You have got to critique your idea if you wanna really knock it out of the park in uh, PM interviews. You have to say, as soon as you give that answer of, we're gonna put carbon fiber in the shoes, um, and that's gonna be the new, the new thing we're gonna to go to market with. You have to then turn around and show them that you can critique your own ideas and be critical and poke holes in your own ideas. And you can do that by saying, well, I know that our price point is probably going to be maybe between 70 and $80 or hundred dollars and carbon fiber is very expensive. So there's pieces here that we've got to start thinking about uh, that, you know, can we even make this work and poke a few holes in your idea, show them that you can be critical of your idea and um, it's gonna go a long way. Okay, uh, so personas, which is the next, the next one. So I, I really think that in an interview, when you're listing personas or you're listing uh, needs or anything, one of the worst things that can happen in a PM interview is if they say, okay, well, tell me who are your users? And someone says, well, um, people who are casual athletes, and that's it, and they just leave it there. Um, the reality is, is like, okay, if it's casual athletes, then break it apart. You can break it apart by, um, you know, some that play uh, often in their backyard, some people that play um, at the local gym. You can start kind of figuring out uh, more in-depth personas, but you have to be able to split these personas apart. One's not going to work. You're going to have to go for at least three. I wouldn't go too many, you know, five, six is probably at the high end, but you don't want to just have one. And I probably would avoid two as well. Okay, so the next one is use cases. And I like to um, explain the way I was taught how to talk about use cases, um, which is when you're prompted for use cases or when you uh, tell them to hand when to talk about the user needs and you start talking about use cases, if the product is something like um, a physical location or a virtual location where somebody has to go, um, use a, a framework and an easy one is like before at what's next. A great example is if you're uh, building a, uh, doing a design question for Tinder, say, well, uh, use cases are, well, before uh, they go on the date, they need uh, directions to get to the person's house. Uh, they need to make plans. So they may need restaurant recommendations. Uh, before they get to the person's house, uh, they may, may need to, um, check and make sure that uh, they have all the clothes that they want for this uh, date. Um, the at, so when they're on the date, uh, make sure that uh, they're safe. Like they, they has a function to, or not, without going to the solution space, like there's something that can help them uh, contact someone if they get in trouble. Um, what's next? So after the date's over, okay, well maybe they wanna 
say like, where's the local coffee shop that's around? How do I get directions back to my house? Like whatever the case is, um, you're going to need, uh, you're going to want to talk about use cases in this, um, in like a structured way. And if you use a framework like before at what's next, you can go through those use cases really quickly. Okay, uh, next one is when we talked about solutions, a lot of times I find that people struggle with coming up with really creative ideas on the fly. And it's totally fine. I think everyone does, um, unless you're, you know, Steve Jobs uh, or Elon Musk, like coming up with really creative ideas to impress someone you just met uh, is really hard on the fly. So what I do is um, if I don't have an epiphany in the five, 10 minutes that I'm you know, doing one of these interviews, um, I uh, have a framework in my head that has kind of all these solutions already kind of thought out. So give you a great example here uh, with the nine that you see on the, on the uh, board or on the presentation. If I get a question such as, um, uh, design a new Mackie shoe that can help people jump higher. You know, the first thing I can say is, okay, well, um, machine learning. We, maybe we could uh, use machine learning or some AI technique to, um, like, maybe have some way to model their foot, which can uh, help the physics of their foot be able to jump higher. And we can use this type of technology to, to do that. Uh, next thing is... Um, uh, social, like maybe uh, we can make it more gamified where uh, based on how high someone jumps, we can track that in some way and we can send that back and share with their friends uh, all of the different ways that, uh, or all the different uh, heights that they jumped. Um, next thing, mass customization. Maybe we can make shoes, again, kind of going back to the first one, make shoes that are like custom to that person's foot. So you can kind of work your way through um, these things, some of them are easier than others, but I would, I would always kind of like have these kind of like set um, solution spaces memorized. They're all kind of technology driven and they're all um, things that can help you if you get kind of in a pinch of having to come up with solutions really quickly. Okay, I uh, believe this may be the last question to go over, um, which is metric questions. So in any product design, uh, interview, uh, they're likely going to ask you, okay, so you built this product, built this new shoe that can help you jump higher. Uh, what are you, you know, how are you going to um, measure if it was successful or not? And I would suggest that you don't even let them get to the point of asking you for this. If you get a product design question, you should roll right into the metrics as to why, uh, as to these are the metrics that I would be looking for. Uh, so if you get a question such as uh, how do you measure the success of the app you just built? So the go-to answer is um, uh, this is again another popular framework and you could say well the first uh, thing that I like to think about is feature related. The second thing is growth related metrics and the third is money related metrics. So for the new app we just built um, uh, feature related I want to see how many people are um, using XYZ feature inside the product. I want to see how many people are engaged with it. Uh, growth related, how many people are downloading this app? Uh, how many people are referring it to their friends? What is our rating on the app store? Money related, um, how much revenue have we made from uh, in-app purchases? Are there just different categories of in-app purchases that work well? But you can see like you're still going back to the structure and framework. And you want to communicate that very clearly to your interviewer that you don't just you know, do this by the seat of your pants, that you are thinking methodically about how to get through uh, these types of questions. Okay, and so lastly, I uh, just wanted to put this out as some resources that uh, I really found useful. Um, so the first one is uh, Cracking the PM Interview and Bulletproof Problem Solving. I also found Lewis Lin's books to be very helpful. Uh, I had a lot of uh, interview questions in there that were um, uh, that I used to practice a lot and do mock interviews with. Um, for technical, uh, most most uh, tech companies have a technical interview as well. Uh, cracking the coding interview was great. Uh, it gets really in depth, but uh, if you can work through the first few problems in each chapter, it's very helpful. Uh, two books that I recommend are Designing Data Intensive Applications and Seven Databases in Seven Days. Any of these seven 
databases in seven days or seven, I think, languages in seven days. Those are really good books because they give you like these really good quick, um, as a PM, give you this really good high level overview of each language or each database. Um, or I think there's one for concurrency models. You can look at the different ways that these things work and um, use that to, uh, in a technical interview, kind of compare and contrast different trade-offs that you might have to make. Uh, podcast. So uh, the Verge podcast had a lot of great product reviews. Right before my interviews, I spent a lot of time listening to other product reviews and what people liked and didn't like. Um, heard a lot of like of the latest ideas that were out there of new products that were coming out. And I think someone in product in general uh, probably likes that kind of, of uh, podcast where they uh, are giving all of these uh, feed, all of this information and reviews about how these latest technology products are working. Uh, next one is A16Z, Anderson Horowitz podcast. Great for thinking strategically about um, how to uh, think about problem solving and, and tech companies. Uh, and then lastly, blogs. So Shotechery um, is great. I've listened to probably every single one of their podcasts. I try to subscribe to their, um, their blog and their uh, emails. Uh, you get really good insights as to how to think about some of the high level uh, strategies and really get insights into how different companies are thinking about things. Scott does a great job with that. And the McKinsey Insight app also found to be very useful. So um, I hope that your uh, PM interviews are very successful and you know, I hope you can use these frameworks and structures to navigate your way uh, when these things get really difficult. So good luck and thank you for your time.